Hello viewers, welcome to FIRE on AWS series. I'm your host, Jennifer Raylan, and without further ado, we have two very special guests with us. Our first is Arif Khan. Yeah, thank you Jennifer, my name is Arif Khan. Um, I'm a technologist with over 15 plus years of experience in the healthcare industry. I worked on a provider side uh, for many, many years, worked on the revenue cycle, care coordination, AC organization, and for the past four and, four and a half years, I'm working on a very large scale peer organization. Very excited about this. I'm an AWS certified developer architect and uh, looking forward to talk with my friend Michael Posey on this one. Michael, can you give us some of your background information? Absolutely. Thank you, Jennifer. So, uh, my name is Michael Cozy, and uh, my background is in the financial uh, industry. I was a managing director at one of the top five investment banks, mm -hmm. uh, Global Investment Bank, and I was responsible for the order management system, which was um, a very high volume, um, global, um, disparate systems, tying them all together and uh, extremely high throughput. So um, uh, my last, subsequent to that, my last four and a half years has been in the healthcare industry. Sounds like that financial background and that industry was very helpful to this though. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So can you both tell me a little bit about what FIRE is? I'm guessing it's not like what I did earlier when I burned my arm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, so as I just mentioned, uh, when you think about the payer and provider side, there are many, many different entities in the healthcare ecosystem that need to exchange data. The challenges are the current technology and the standards that are being used, they are definitely decades older. They are not to leverage the latest modern innovations that have happened over the past couple of years. Fire is supposed to solve that problem. Fire is based on the modern restful plug and play kind of a technology. The same technology, Jennifer, that as you can see in Facebook, Twitter, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the scale that we're talking about. And we have a background picture that kind of uh, shows some of the different entities. And as you can see, the picture gets very dense. As my experience has been on the provider side and the peer side, I am seeing so many data exchanges, custom exchanges, custom file formats, and it becomes very messy. I'm very excited for FIRE, and I'm also very excited to see FIRE and how it can help on AWS stack as well. Yeah, and so as you know, more and more of these uh, healthcare providers are you know, actually encouraging patients to know more about their information, yeah. have that information. And as Eric pointed out, you have your Apple Watches, you have Google. Um, these, as long as uh, as long as the data is fire compliant, uh, they can build any kind of application they want against it. They know they're going to get consistently the same message back in the structure that they ask for. Mm -hmm. So this is this is really important that uh, we we start adopting this this protocol. Excellent. This sounds like a very quick, efficient, secure way to exchange information. I love it. So can you tell me a little bit about why FIRE on AWS? Yeah, so when we look at the scale that we're talking about, as I mentioned about the peer provider, so many entities, you really need some sort of platform that's scalable uh, to a very large scale. Do not many, uh, and I think in that context, you think about AWS and some of the large cloud players. AWS is, has proven itself to be the leader in the industry. And as you will talk more on this side, there are so many built-in technology stacks that can be leveraged to make this scalable platform leverage and help on this fire, fire stack side. I'm very excited towards it. We have a slide that covered more on that. But I think AWS is the tool that we, we think has a, has, has a very strong play on this. Excellent. This definitely sounds interesting. Can you give examples of what the specific use cases for Fire would be? Yeah, absolutely. So we are, we are listing down some of the use cases. One of the use cases is... Imagine you need to take an appointment with a primary care physician. And normally in those cases, what you want to do is that as soon as you take an appointment, you want to alert your care team. The normal challenges are there are disparate system, different type of file standards. What FHIR allows us to do is that if you have FHIR in a mix, it makes the standards easier. It makes the communication much, much faster. FHIR is based on a very fundamental concept of resources. So it's like, it's like a Lego building blocks. There are many, many resources that make a fire message. In this case, you're using basically an appointment kind of a building block. This is one of the use cases. Michael, I think you want to cover this one. Yeah, so in, uh, in this, another use case is if a patient goes to an emergency room, um, very quickly and very efficiently using the fire protocol, uh, they would be able to notify the primary care provider. Uh, they would be able to get authorization from the payer and in addition to that, notifying uh, real time uh, that you are in the emergency room 
and and all of the pertinent information for that patient would come back. So it's a bi-directional, um, it's an asynchronous type uh, messaging that would go back and forth. So. So say in the specific example of a mother taking her child to a pediatric office, the pediatrician then needs to determine what vaccination shots are due for the child. Can you give a specific example of the resources, as you mentioned, that would be helpful? Yes. Yeah. I think this is, where, this is where we really take fire to a real person scenario. Mm -hmm. um, in a very um, hardcore or a, um, you can see a single box kind of system, you don't see a service-oriented architecture where things get plug and play. In FIRE, it's based on resources. And as you just put down the question, there are many different resources that can make this overall answer possible for us. We will have a patient resource, for example. We will have a practitioner resources, organization, location, observation, and encounter. And in addition, you can have some other resources too. The thing about FIRE is it's resource-based. That gives you what, what can be out there. Then there are standards for each of those resources. And then there are specific profiles of how that resources can be constructed. So it's very much extensible kind of a platform. Yeah, I think the interesting thing about that is um, it's, it's not, no pun intended, it's not a fire hose. You don't, uh, in today's <laughs> environment, you basically yeah. ask for information about a patient uh, and it sends pretty much everything back. In this particular case, using fire with the resources, you're only getting back what you asked for. So it's very efficient. It's direct. Very point. fast. It's yeah. The, it only, yep. Oh, yeah. Excellent. These sound like some great real world use cases. Can you give an example further of how myself as a patient would benefit from this? So, yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that you, you'll be able to do is from your iPhone or your Android phone or anything, you'll have direct access to your personal information, your health data. Mm -hmm. You know, they, there are... These healthcare companies are encouraging you to take more control of your health. The more you know about your information, the better. So uh, it will it will it'll allow you to have personal access to that information. I already though have access to my patient portal on my phone. How will Fire change this? So that's true. I mean, the majority of the providers do offer a portal into your healthcare information. Mm -hmm. That information is extremely limited due to the constraints around the older protocols of HL7. So with, with Fire, it will have the ability to uh, have an app, and there will be, at, I, I believe there will be an app store where you can load an app, whatever app you want, you want to know your heartbeat, you want to know what, what you're doing. So um, so FIRE does actually solve problems that are unsolvable today. Mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> now, Michael, on the, on the app store concept, this may sound like a, uh, you know, very um, out of the blue idea long years back, but now it's very real. We see a real storage on the, on the Apple side where there are apps, and, uh, and I think the using a FIRE app Based platform seems very real. Thank you very much. Yeah, it sounds like So, how about we go into some practical usage? You talked about AWS. How does AWS play into Fire? Yeah, so I mean, as we talked before, AWS has a scalable, massively scalable platform um, and tools that can help you execute your Fire strategy. Certainly not the only thing. There are many, many different uh, technology stacks that can be used. When we see AWS, the building blocks that we will cover in our next videos, we are going to cover some of the API RESTful calls, we are going to cover some of the streaming based tool set. We are also going to talk a lot more about this AWS NiFi EC2 servers. We have some, Michael has done a, an extensive research on that side. Uh, we, we think that the NiFi has a strong play on it in terms of facilitating some of the core functionality that it brought to the table that can be leveraged in terms of processing messages and using them in a very meaningful, cohesive manner. Um, we also are going to talk about some of the Dynamo BB and Redshift, uh, that how Fire can be uh, used using those technologies can, can be more available to the rest of the uh, enterprise systems. Um, so without further ado, actually, Michael, I know you. we can cover slightly on the AWS NiFi on this. So let me take you on that slide. So yeah, so NiFi is, um, Apache NiFi is a data flow management solution that uh, that we actually implemented here. Now I just put together, this is just a high level, we won't get into detail in the next video, we'll, we'll, we'll dive deeper into this. But it's just a, 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 just a managed, a, a data flow 
management, and uh, I just created a, a simple flow that that generates an HL7 message, uh, converts the extracts the attributes out of it, um, puts it into a JSON message, and then further I just construct that into a, a hierarchy of, uh, of of JSON. So we'll cover that in detail in the next flow and. And why you'd want to use this. So you don't want us to see your thunder? Yeah, no, but, but I have to, I'm, I'm enticing, you know, the next, uh, the next video. <laughs> Excellent. This sounds very clear and concise. Thank you both so much. So in conclusion, we discussed FHIR and its use cases, how AWS can enable reliable, secure, and scalable FHIR solutions. And in the next video, we'll talk more details about FHIR information. Thank you so much again for joining us today. Please like and subscribe to be up to date on further information. As we mentioned, next week we're going to be covering more details. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out.